Right, I'm going to show you how to make some lovely scones just like these. I was asked if I'd do some from a few people online. People I know asked me as well, so I'm going to show you how to make ten. There was ten. Sarah's had one already. They just came out of the oven, they're still hot. Uh, I've already had one run through to make sure the flour's okay. I've not used this flour before, so I'm going to show you how to do it. If you follow this step by step on how to make them, you will come out with some beautiful and very tasty scones. small little packets. I think it's that cheaper. You know, if you're a bit of cooking, it's where you go. Last river, I think you can share it with your friends. self raging flour, we've got plain flour and self raging flour. Like that. And we're going to need some scales. Put the fancy ones out. You don't have to have fancy ones like ours, you can just have any ones. I normally would use these. But I normally use it to do a job. Right, scales. Now, because I'm not going to get, we're going to need 500 grams of self-raising flour to start off with. And I'm not going to get it on there. So what I normally do is just put one of these things, or a bowl, any bowl you've got. These ones I got, or we got. These ones we got from Ikea many years ago. Now, when you put the bowl on, the needle's going to move. You see, look, it's going to move. Adjust the needle to the zero. I'll just turn it down. Back to the zero, just there. We have 500 grams of that. Let me get the flour ready. So you can see a bit better. Actually, quite nice. You know, this flour is very good flour. I normally use the one from the shop, and this is a better, far better flour. The rise is so nice. There's 500 grams. That's what we want. I'm going to keep some flour in the bowl. We're going to need that bowl in a short while. So we'll just Get rid of it. There we go. We have our 500 grams of flour. Now I'm going to go back to the tin again. I'm going to readjust, readjust that uh, needle back to where it should be. Out there. There. Now we want. Uh, two ounces or 50 grams of sugar. Now, you'd normally use caster sugar for this. Well, I would normally use caster sugar for this, but we don't have any. So let's use normal sugar. 50 grams of that. 50 grams, or maybe just over, if you like it a little bit sweeter. I'm just going to go a little over. I just made some, and I think you could go over a bit. Because uh, this is normal sugar, I've gone over a fraction. It's not as sweet as the castle sugar. And that goes straight into your mix. Like that. Now, after that, we're going to need marge. Butter, marge, whatever you want to call it. That's what we're going to need. Now, I'm using this marge here. You don't have to use that. You can use any one you like. We, would normally, we wouldn't normally have this stuff, but we thought we'd give it a try. And you know, it's actually very nice butter. It's very, very tasty. Right, we want uh, 110 grams inside there. That's just in between the 200 there. Let's scoop it in. A little bit more. Scoop it in. A little bit more. 110 on the nose. I'm going to put a tiny bit more in there because you know what? I'm feeling generous. Right, the now goes into your mix. In your mix. That's all there. We're finished with the scales now, we're going to move them out of the way. 
we don't know to need them anymore. This is our mix. So this is called the dry mix. And we're going to mix this all together by hand. So you'll be running back as a pause, looking for towels and stuff. We're going to mix this all together by hand here. Um, we're going to do it now. So just cover the butter up and just sort of pinch it in. You shouldn't need a mixer or anything. I don't think you need to use a mixer for this. Better by hand, I think. Okay. You want like a very light, very light bread crumby effect or look or feel or whatever. That's what you need. And obviously the more you're mixing it, the more air you're getting inside there, and that's what it counts. Excuse me if I go off screen a little bit there, because uh, I've never filmed myself cooking before. Except for now. I know a lot of people ask me about scones, they normally sometimes come round and I'll taste it. And I always say I'll give them the recipe, but if you follow these steps, you can't go wrong. It's just so simple. Now, right at the very beginning of this, um, I will s stick some text at the beginning of the video anyway, or there would have been text at the beginning of the video reminding you to turn your oven on to gas mark 7 um, gas mark 7 or 200 if you're under the electric make sure when you put your oven on it's on the 200 mark there I've been using this oven for some time and looking at it from up here I've always been putting the setting over there wondering why things are burning all the time then when you come down and look it's not where it should be it should be there we'll make sure the settings in the right place um, get the oven up and, up, up and ready going you don't want to be having this all done ready to go and then the oven's not ready yet or you stick it in some people stick it in and then turn the oven on and then they get their times and mix stuff in this should be ready in 12 minutes or 13 minutes and it's not and it's not Let's keep going with that keep it going the more you mix it the better it comes get off your hands you get sticking to your hands a little bit just brush it off if you want to wear gloves while you're doing this you can it's up to you I find it easier with that. And I'll probably wash them three or four times in the process of uh, doing this and before. Got like a breadcrumb texture of that. I'm just doing this just so I can uh, get some slow motion really. Right, I'll just wash my hands now. Now at this stage, this is dry mix is done. Dry mix is done there. At this stage, if you want to use raisins, cherries, or anything, if you want to use anything inside there, you can stick it in here now. So if you're making scones with raisins, stick it in there, mix it back up again. Cherries, some people put cheese in it, some people do all, all sorts of stuff. We're just making plain scones. Sarah doesn't like raisins, she doesn't eat cherries or some raisins, nothing like that. She right, that's really there. Now we're going to need milk. Right, now we're going to need to put some milk. We want about half a pint to... Half a pint, half a pint I think it's 300 mils. 300 mils to half a pint of milk we want there. I'm doing slow motion with this camera here, by the way. You'll see it jumping backwards and forwards. Here we go. Half a pint. Now we've got our milk. We're going to make sure everything else is ready. We're going to make sure this is ready because we're going to put our scones on this when we're finished with it. We cut them all out. We want to put them on here, so I'm going to first lightly flour this. We'll just flour it. This will stop the scones from sticking to the paper. 
simple but effective idea. That's ready, put that to one side. You're going to need a scone cutter to cut the scones out with. One of them, you can either use the grater side, if we call it a grater side, or the plain cut. Whichever one you use, you just push straight down and lift. Don't twist, don't push down, you twist, it's tempting. Straight down, boom, and then just lift it out. And the same with the other side, straight down. You want it to sort of tear open, it's gone. Straight down, that's what we want to do with that. We also want to get ready, egg. I already broke the egg inside there. Mix it up. We're going to cover the scones on the top of that afterwards and um, let it make them glaze up nicely. So right now we've got our dry mix. This is a plain dry mix. If you're having raisins, you would stuck your raisins in there by now or you would have had your cherries in there by now. And, um, and then we'll start the mix. Now, dig a little hole in the middle. All right. Use a wooden spoon. You have to use a wooden spoon, apparently. I don't know why. I don't know how this food that I'm cooking knows whether the spoon's wooden or not, but that's what you've got to use. Pour your milk in and just mix it up. Just keep mixing it with the spoon. Keep going with the spoon until it's done. You shouldn't need to put your hands in there at all. Just do that. Just keep it going with the spoon. You want to keep it going, mix it up. Get as much air in there as possible. Keep pushing the dry to the wet. And if your raisins are in there now, they'll all be mixing up. If you're cherry, I like raisins. I love, I love raisins in it. I love cherries in it as well. I've not really tried the cheese. I know a lot of people like cheese in there. It's not. You know, I don't, one day I'll give it a go. But you just keep mixing it. Up it will mix itself up like that. Like that. And a uh, little spoon and keep pushing off. If you want to get it off, say you put your hand, you don't have to put your hand in there. Just do that. Get it off of there. Keep it going. If you want to put your hands in there and play around with it, you can. Uh, I'm not. Again, push it all off. All that air really help it rise. That's it, that's pretty much ready to come out of there, I think. It's, it's, it's very doughy effect, that's what, you, that's what we're looking for. Very doughy effect. Right, we need to now put some flour on our surface. And we got some flour that we took out the flour earlier. And we can see the flour on the surface. Let's get that done. shape it really. I don't want to move it around too much. But move it around, but not that much. About an inch, half an inch, an inch, three quarter of an inch, stuff like that. There's a suit. Move and get your cutter ready and go straight in, straight down. Just down on the tray. Again, close to the edge, straight down. Don't twist it. Close to the edge, that'll help it rise. This flour rises very well, a lot better than the, the normal flour we buy. 
right to the edge. Again, straight down, straight to the edge. Don't forget, don't twist it. You want it to sort of break open there. Flower there. Mix a lot here. Get it back together again, mix it up. By sticking that in the flower, it helps it not stick to the to the Six, come back to number nine. We might be able to pull ten out of this if we're lucky. One more, we get out of that. Just, just a little bit more flat of that, but we get it out of there anyway. A bit smaller this one. And, uh, right, that's that section there, all done. Now we need to uh, get closer so we can see. And we're going to wash that with a little bit of egg we've got there. We're going to quick wash over. Just make it glazed as well. I actually spilled a bit while I was doing that. One of them, that one's salt. Totally, uh, that could be like an egg scone, that one. Took the full brunt of it. Took the full whack. We'll wash up our scones like that. Just for glazing purposes, really. Now the oven's been on there, I'm going to change the timer to 13, I've got it set to 12. That time, 21, that's the timer, I'm going to set that, set that to 12, 13. Should be 12 minutes, but I'm going to go 13, because the last one's just a little bit out. So we're going to set it at 13. Don't count already, but I'm going to stick it on temperature for now. Just want to get them scones in the oven. Get them in the oven. Once they're inside there, put your timer on. And they'll start counting backwards. And this thing. Too bad, do they? Let's get a close up of them. If your timing is right and everything is right, they should just look and taste gorgeous. Now, with your um, hands without burning them too much, stick them in somewhere to cool down. I put flour down so it doesn't stick. That's hot. Torture. There we go. See the flour helps on the bottom. You can sprinkle flour on the top if you like flour on the top. You've got, you know, you've got three, six, nine, ten. You've got ten scones. I thought we had more there. So the mix was right. There you go. Some gorgeous scones. And if you follow my recipe, yours will look and taste as lovely as these ones do. I did these with normal sugar. If you use caster sugar is what you're supposed to, but I don't don't think it makes a difference. It tastes gorgeous.
maybe you want to show us how to cook something. I'm really interested in cooking bread, but is there different ways you can cook a bread? Maybe uh, we can have a video of that from somebody out there.